welcome back. And this time, this is our full spoiler review for Night Swim. Again, full spoiler, full spoiler, full spoiler, and unpaid. What we have here is a very January horror movie. And I have even more questions than when I started. Don't worry, I'll link the original questions at the end. So here's what actually happens. So the dad is an MLB player. I think he played for the Bruins or Brewers somewhere in Minnesota right before he was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. And they decided with his diagnosis, they were ready to lay down roots. And apparently he was traded like a fuck ton. So somebody answered the question for me. Are you either a very good baseball player to be traded so much or a very bad baseball player to be traded so much? Moving on. So they chose the house that they had because they had a swimming pool in the backyard. And swimming is supposed to be really good for his MS. And it is. It's almost like he was healed. But then all of these ghosts and stuff start showing up at the pool and trying to drown the kids. Now, I'm going to attempt to explain to you why that is, but I can't make heads or tails of this. They brought a pool man out. The pool man said that the pool had its own aquifer. Which means, I think, that the pool has its own well. I don't know why you would have your own well specifically just for the pool. Like, if you had a whole ass well, why wouldn't you attach it to the house? Which leads me down the rabbit hole of why the hell aren't the toilets haunted, anyway. But then we find out from the previous owners that the people who settled the area way back when found magic water. That the waterway, the river or whatever, was magic water. And you could make a wish in the water, but you had to give it a sacrifice. But aquifers are groundwater. Now, they could be connected. That's not what I'm saying. They could absolutely have connected water. However... If the main water system that they built the city on means that their regular water that everybody's drinking should be connected to the damn magic water, which means the magic water problem should be in everybody's house. Why is it only this swimming pool? The number two reason I can't believe that it's just the aquifer and not the running water is that all of this was coming up from the damn pool drain, including the monster that looked like the mixture between Barbarian and the fudge monster from Candyland. Now, as we move right along, we have to play that Daniel Tosh game, Is It Racist? And, you know, I could be reading too hard into that one, but I was like... So the person that owned the house before this family was back in 1992. It was a woman of Asian descent and her two children. She had a little boy and a little girl. The little boy was extremely sick. And then one night, the ghosties lure the little girl out into the pool, and she falls in, and she drowns. And we find out later that the mother made a wish to make her son well and sacrificed her daughter. To summarize it, an Asian woman sacrificed her daughter to save her son. Anyways, the husband made a wish to get well again and he was willing to sacrifice his son. But then at the end they tried to stop it and that didn't work. So he sacrificed himself and he got pulled into the drain. And now he's also a pool ghosty. But also completely missing. And then they decide to fill in the pool. Which leads me to a multitude of questions. Number one, we find out that at least like five people have drowned in this pool. There was like a little girl and then a bunch of nurses and another dude. At least five. You would think by like maybe the third one we would just fill in the pool. Like they did pH strip testing, but I would like to see the DNR reports for this. Your husband's soul stuck in the drain and you just filled it with dirt. Which leads me to my next question. Your whole ass husband went missing. Poof, gone. And right after that, you decide to fill in the pool. Like, are they not worried that he has gone missing? That he has been murdered? You don't think that's going to be a whole ass investigation? He's contracted by the MLB. They're going to be looking for his ass. So that's all my questions regarding the actual storyline. Um, there are subplots and I have questions and concerns. Number one, if we're not talking about the pool in this movie, we're talking about baseball. It's one of the two. There, there is no in-between. Have you ever heard of the Bechdel test where you have to have two women having a conversation that doesn't involve a man? Did you know you can make a movie about a haunted object and have entire conversations that don't revolve around that object? Oh, I'm sorry, we do. Because if it's not about the pool, it's about fucking baseball. We have a solid, like, five, ten minute scene of nothing but playing baseball. What's that leading up to? Jack shit. The man keeps not only his memorabilia set up in the garage with his home gym, which is fine, he has a TV that has videos of himself playing baseball, and it's on pretty constantly. And then finally, you have the daughter's, like, subplot. But it's not a subplot. Really, it had nothing to do with anything, except bringing her boyfriend over to swim one night. But, like, you didn't need this for that. 
Anyway, she joins the Christian Fellowship Swim Club. Like, okay, fellowship, cool. Jesus, cool. Swim club, cool. But how do you fellowship while swimming? You see what I'm saying? Also, like, thinking about it, that had potential to be cool as fuck. Like, maybe she gained some spirituality, she could have helped the ghost. It, it did nothing. Nothing about that was important. Oh, and the cat doesn't make it. Fucking bullshit. Anyways, 5 out of 10. And here are my original questions. I'm running into this problem where the more previews I see for Night Swim, the more skeptical I am. Like, I'm already eh about this because it's getting a January release. And January and February are pretty much dump months for horror. Um, anything they don't expect to do really well, they throw into January and February. Now, granted, you do have your breakouts. Like, I think Megan came out around Valentine's Day and did really well. But I saw the second trailer today, and now I can't help but think about something. What the hell is she haunting? I mean, they want you to focus on the aspect of the pool. That's, like, the big thing. But then you have shots of inside the house, and the water's moving weird, and the guy's taking a shower. So is she haunting the sewer? Or is it the main water line? Because if she's haunting the sewer, then we have an entire toilet ghost on our hands. Which, like, if she's a sewer ghost, why isn't she haunting other people's houses? Do they have a septic tank? Or do they have a uh, main sewage? And then you have the same problem running into your water line if it's the main aquifer. And what can you solve the problem by replacing your pipes? But let's say she's just haunting the pool by itself. The little boy sees her in the little catcher thingy. The catcher is not that big. But she fits inside, which leads me to believe this is a diagram of your standard in-ground pool, which is again connected to your main lines, but it also has a return line that goes through the filter and the heater. So every few minutes, especially if she gets caught in the little traps, um, does she have to go through the heater and the filter line? Is her soul having to get graded through a sand filter the whole time? Do they have a saltwater pool, or can we take care of her adding chlorine? There's a whole clip in trailer number two talking about, well, maybe the last owners just weren't pool people, making it sound like it was weird they didn't fill up a pool for 15 years. Maybe they were elderly, or maybe they were on a fixed income. You know, filling pools is expensive. That's like hundreds of dollars. And especially if you're not healthy enough to use it. If I had to take a wild-ass guess, um, there's going to be a dead girl buried under the pool. Always swim with a buddy. Do not swim in water that you are uncomfortable with the depth. Always check your pool and cleaning traps for gators and snakes. Have proper safety equipment around your pool. Maybe put up a fence around it as well so people can't get in. Update your insurance. If you cannot swim but do want to enjoy the water, there is nothing wrong with floaties. Learn some CPR from your local Red Cross or American Heart Association. Thank you.